Hello students, in today's video we are going to discuss uh, pharmacology of cyclooxygenase 1 and cyclooxygenase 2. Now this video is a very important video as it gives basic understanding of uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs in short ANSIDS. Now ANSIDS are one of the most widely used drugs. So first of all let's understand what is cyclooxygenase. Now, cyclooxygenase is an enzyme that synthesizes prostaglandins, prostacyclin and thromboxane. So, cyclooxygenase synthesizes prostaglandins, prostacyclin and thromboxane. Now, this cyclooxygenase enzyme is of two types, cyclooxygenase 1 in short COX-1 and cyclooxygenase 2 in short COX-2. Now, functionally, Two types of prostaglandins are synthesized. Now let's see to the functions of these prostaglandins. Now first type of prostaglandins are the physiological prostaglandins. Now physiological prostaglandins are produced continuously by the body cells in small amounts throughout our life. And these prostaglandins perform physiological protective functions. Now, cyclooxygenase 1 is primarily responsible for the synthesis of these physiological prostaglandins. Now, in addition to physiological prostaglandins, some prostaglandins are produced in large amounts only during inflammation. And uh, these prostaglandins further exacerbate or further increase inflammatory response they also produce pain and fever. So COX-2 is primarily responsible for the synthesis of these prostaglandins. So we have two types of prostaglandins, physiological prostaglandins and prostaglandins that produce inflammation, pain and fever. Now let's understand what are non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs in short answers. Now, ANSATS produce anti-inflammatory, analgesic and antipyretic action. So, these drugs reduce inflammation, uh, these drugs reduce pain and these drugs also reduce fever. As they reduce inflammation, they are termed as anti-inflammatory. As they reduce pain, they are termed as analgesic. And as they reduce fever, they are termed as antipyretic agents. Now, one of the oldest ANSATS is the aspirin. Now, in addition to its anti-inflammatory, analgesic and antipyretic properties, aspirin also produces antiplatelet action. Now, antiplatelet action means it does not allow platelets to form aggregates. So, no platelet plugs are produced and this prevents the formation of thrombus. Now, if this thrombus is formed, this thrombus will block the blood vessels. Now, if a coronary artery is blocked, blood supply to the cardiac tissue is stopped, causing myocardial infarction. If the cerebral artery is blocked, then supply of neurons is stopped, causing stroke. So, aspirin produces antiplatelet action and uh, it reduces formation of thrombus, thereby reducing the incidences of myocardial infarction and stroke. Now let's understand the basic mechanism of action of ANSATS. Now ANSATS, ANSATS inhibit uh, ANSATS inhibit synthesis of prostaglandins as these prostaglandins are responsible for producing inflammation, pain and fever. Thus ANSATS by blocking Synthesis of prostaglandins produce anti-inflammatory, analgesic and antipyretic action. Now as discussed, this COX enzyme produces prostaglandins. So ANSATS by blocking cyclooxygenase enzyme block the synthesis of prostaglandins and therefore they reduce inflammation, pain and fever. Now COX-2 is an inducible enzyme. So, as the name suggests, uh, its synthesis is induced by the inflammation. Now, it is expressed at the site of tissue injury and inflammation. 
Now, COX-2 produces large amount of prostaglandins at the site of inflammation and these prostaglandins cause exaggerated or increased inflammatory response, produce pain and fever. So, as COX-2 is induced by inflammation, these prostaglandins uh, cause inflammation, pain and fever and are produced only during inflammation and tissue injury. However, COX-2 also plays physiologically important roles in organs like brain, kidney and it also stimulates uh, platelets to produce prostacyclin. Uh, this is also one of the important protective function of uh, COX-2. So now we are clear uh, with the pharmacology of uh, cyclooxygenase 1 and cyclooxygenase uh, 2. Now let's summarize what all we have learned. COX-1 is a constitutive enzyme. It is a constituent of cell present all the time, all the time in the cell. While COX-2 is inducible, it is synthesized primarily during tissue injury, uh, infection, inflammation. Now COX-1 synthesize prostaglandins producing physiological functions like uh, synthesis of uh, thick mucus uh, that forms the gastroduodenal barrier and protects the wall of uh, uh, stomach as well as the wall of duodenum from the corrosive effects of acid pepsin and hydrochloric acid then uh, prostaglandin uh, protective prostaglandins that is prostaglandin E2 causes a renal vasodilation. It uh, improves the renal blood flow. It improves the blood flow to the kidney and increase the glomerular filtration rate. Another important function uh, is to uh, produce uterine contraction. Now uterine contraction is produced by prostaglandin F2 alpha. Now this uterine contraction is essential for the progression of labor and for the prevention of postpartum hemorrhage. Now COX-1 also stimulates synthesis of thromboxane A2 by the platelets and uh, this thromboxane A2 causes uh, platelet aggregation and this results in the formation of platelet plugs. Now these platelet plugs they seal the injured blood vessels and uh, now very important that COX-1 produces prostaglandins that uh, primarily are responsible for the protective functions. But in small amounts, COX-1 also produces prostaglandins that produce inflammation uh, in the initial stages of tissue injury uh, and inflammation. So COX-1 also causes inflammation, uh, but only during the initial stages. On the other hand, COX-2 mediates synthesis of prostaglandins producing inflammation, pain and fever. So these prostaglandins that produce inflammation, pain and fever are the major culprits. So we can say it is the COX-2 that is the major culprit. But COX-2 also shows some important physiological functions. Like very important, it stimulates release of uh, prostacyclin that is the PGI2 from endothelium. Now, prostacyclin inhibits platelet aggregation, prevents the formation of thrombus and therefore reduces the risk of myocardial infarction and stroke. Now, in kidneys, COX-2 mediates uh, synthesis of prostaglandins that cause uh, sodium and water excretion. Now, prostaglandins produced by COX-2 are also required for the patency of ductus arteriosus. That means to keep this uh, ductus arteriosus open. Now, ductus arteriosus is a blood vessel that connects pulmonary artery with the iota. Now, it remains open in a fetus and closes as soon as the baby is born. Now, these prostaglandins which are produced by the stimulation of COX-2 keeps this ductus arteriosus open in a fetus. So, a very important function of uh, cyclooxygenase 2. Now let's talk about the ANSIDs. ANSIDs we know they uh, produce anti-inflammatory, analgesic and antipyretic action by blocking the synthesis of prostaglandins. Now the ANSIDs are of three types. 
non specific cox inhibitors that is those uh, ancestors which block cox1 as well as cox2 then preferential cox2 inhibitors that means those ancestors that block cox1 as well as cox2 but they produce more inhibition of cox2 compared to cox1 then selective cox2 inhibitors these ancestors they selectively block cox2 sparing the cox1 so all these ancestors reduce inflammation pain and fever so now we should discuss what happens if the cox1 is inhibited or what happens if the cox2 is inhibited we should understand desirable as well as undesirable effects of uh, cox1 inhibition as well as cox2 inhibition now let's first talk about the significance of uh, cox1 inhibition now since the prostaglandins that are produced by cyclooxygenase 1 are responsible for producing inflammation during the initial stages inhibition of cox1 produces anti inflammatory effect but this is associated with a number of side effects now uh, inhibition of cox1 reduces secretion of mucus that uh, increases the risk of peptic ulcer then again inhibition of cox1 reduces renal vasodilation that causes a fall in the glomerular filtration rate and uh, reduced blood, blood supply to the kidneys can cause renal ischemia further it can result in renal failure then uh, again blockage of uh, cox1 reduces uterine contraction and uh, a fall in the uterine contraction delays labor and increase the risk of postpartum hemorrhage then uh, another very important uh, uh, side effect uh, blockage of cox1 causes reduced synthesis of thromboxane a2 and this causes risk of bleeding so cox1 inhibition is associated with the anti inflammatory effect but a number of side effects are associated with the blockage of cox1 on the other hand uh, if the cox2 is inhibited it produces anti inflammatory analgesic and uh, uh, anti pyretic uh, actions but now inhibition of uh, synthesis of prostaglandin Uh, I two that is prostacyclin by blocking the COX two produces prothrombotic effect and this increases the risk of uh, myocardial infarction and stroke. Uh, one of the most important side effect of uh, selective COX two inhibitors. Now apart from this, uh, this uh, inhibition or blockage of COX two it causes uh, sodium and water retention. and this increases the water retention and this can cause rise in the blood pressure and apart from this uh if the uh, ansets are given to a pregnant woman and if the cox2 is blocked there can be premature closure of the ductus arteriosus which is uh, fatal for the uh, fetus so this is in brief on the pharmacology of uh, cyclooxygenase 1 and cyclooxygenase 2 Uh, this forms the basics of uh, non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs if you are aware of the differences between cox1 and cox2 if you have understood the pharmacology of cox1 and cox2 it becomes very easy for you to uh, remember to understand non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs so if you find the video useful kindly like subscribe and share this video thanks for watching this video